Good morning, things have changed. Got a haircut, first one in three years, went to an actual barber, got a real haircut. And uh, I'm now hanging out with Belinda, and Belinda's got this wicked 88 van. She's owned it for like eight years. She's crossed the country 11 times. She's uh, it's a really badass rig. The interior is so good, such a clean build on the inside. The exterior is like pretty rough, but it looks really, really adventure capable. And I like that, I like that ugly and functioning and just well built well built awesome rig it's kind of cool hanging out she's been watching my videos for a while and uh catching up with them has been a lot of fun because they have their own adventures and stuff to like inspire me a little bit too on the cross-country motorcycle cross-country van trips we'll be doing that soon too so it's holding up pretty good i'm not a carpenter i had no idea what i was doing i just do what i could oh that's really nice actually and then I've got a, a woman in Germany, she's building her van too, and she made me these. Pistons of a hash bag of Civic, and that holds it all right? Yep. Nice. When it, well they're getting it's old. It's kind of balanced actually. They're it's getting old, so when it gets cold, they're, they don't help <laughs> as much. Alright, so this is Belinda, and to explain a little bit what Belinda does, she's run this Tens of Anarchy, which you see on the bumper over there, um, club, and then basically it was like, not specifically just women only kind of ride but it was definitely more open to the variety of, of van dwelling as she as she sees it and less of a club that like dictates that you have to have a certain kind of van it's a lot of fun and i like that the term banarchy it really kind of <laughs> rubs it in. It. it rubs that uh that uh ideology right in i like it anyway it was cool hanging out with her and um yeah if you just, i'll send a link i'll put it in the description you can check out some of her stuff it's really cool oh that's not good Oh, that's the dog you're barking at. Champ's been losing it. There's a dog wandering around. <laughs> and I don't know where that came from. Champ, did you see this dog? It's right over there. Take care. All right, so first stop of the day is the old town of Rowley. This is kind of like a kind of like a ghost town, kind of like a restored old school prairies town. It's kind of like showcasing a little bit of the nothingness between Calgary and Edmonton and all these like tiny little villages. This is what they used to look like. I mean, really, other than the style of the building, nothing much has changed in this area. A lot of the towns are still just as small. And that's kind of the thing with Canada, you know, it's so sparsely populated, there's a lot of issues that come with it. You know, it's very beautiful, but a lot of it's inaccessible. Um, costs tend to be a lot higher. I mean, frick, my cell phone is like five times the price it was in the US. Um, and there's just, you know, there's just not that many people. And when you get a lot of people, you get competition, you get capitalism, and that's just not a thing you get up here in uh, Canada. So it's taken some getting used to. A lot of it's rubbed me the wrong way since I got back, but it's, uh, I'm fine. I'll deal with it. I think it's a lot nicer being Canadian when you're not actually in Canada. <laughs> Once you're back in Canada, you remember, oh yeah, you know, there's not much here. It's beautiful, but it's hard to find the beautiful stuff. There's no roads to get there. The road conditions are pretty terrible. Everything, the expenses are a lot higher. I don't know. I'm gonna do my best to show you guys as much as I can possibly find, but uh, we'll see. Hey. You're not in there. They 
even have this old prairie schoolhouse, but with all the dolls sitting at the chairs and it's all dilapidated, it's kind of creepy, I'm not going to lie to you. All right, welcome to Edmonton. I uh, finished my couple shoots that I had here already, and uh, yeah, now I just have free time. And I thought I'd check out a little bit of downtown area where I'm already at. I don't, I'm not really keen on staying in Edmonton all that long, because last time I was here a year ago, I spent like a week, and it was pretty miserable. So uh, I'm just gonna check out a little bit, and then we're probably gonna start heading out of town. So a few things about Edmonton, and I think it's actually a good opportunity to also talk about my trip up north and what it really means to go up to the Arctic of Canada. Edmonton is two major things. It's the gateway to the north, and it's also an oil town, big time. It had a huge oil boom a few years ago, and now it had a huge oil crash a few years after that, and uh, kind of shows it's a bit of a rough town. Compared to Calgary, it's definitely more blue collar. There's definitely a bit of an edge to Edmonton. It's also the gateway to the north. Now what's interesting is the Northern Territories, all three territories together, have a population of about 100,000. So that's one third of all of Canada's land mass. And it only has a population of about 100,000. So this city, it's the last Northern city really. And after this, there's just little villages and a lot of nothing. This city has eight to nine times the population of all those territories put together. So. Yeah, a lot of people come down from the north. A lot of people uh, come up to here to get, get access to the north. And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. The Northern Territories are split into three territories. There's Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. And they're kind of separated in three kind of ethnic groups. So you got Yukon, which is predominantly white, Northwest Territories, which is predominantly Slavic or First Nation, and uh, Nunavut, which is predominantly Inuit. So. Yeah, well, I'll be doing mostly Yukon, a little bit of Northwest Territories. But yeah, it is pretty, pretty daunting to know this is the last city I'll really be in for the next little while. I kind of just want to leave it right now. I think I might. All right, so I spent some time at a local coffee shop getting some work done. They have a really good internet connection here, which is kind of weird. And also, it's definitely going to be a nice contrast over the next couple of weeks where I won't have an internet connection probably at all. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully I've got all caught up on the editing before I left. Uh, we'll see how many episodes I actually have up. So there might be a little bit of a gap. I pretty much caught up on my editing. So we're all, you're only like a few days behind me now. So you're doing pretty good there on the YouTube. It's been hard to like pick it up and get going again on the episodes because like I've been in Calgary for almost two weeks. Um, so I just like, I was way out of the, way out of the van life, vlogging kind of cycle and and I had to pick it up again today. Today's the first day I've really like started going again. So yeah, just not really feeling it just yet. Sorry for the kind of slow crappy episode today. That's okay. Tomorrow will be a lot more fun. But uh, every day in the, from now until the Arctic is gonna be quite a lot of miles. And there's not all that much up there, at least not from my research right now that I can tell from, but you know, I'll just have to keep my eyes open and, and spot what I spot and stop when I can stop and check stuff out because I really don't know what I'm going to go into, what I'm going into. My, my map is sparse this time around. I mean, there's just not much available out there for uh, for the Arctic. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all, guys. I'm going to go camp up tonight. Um, just some street camping probably or whatever. Something easy. And uh, yeah, I'll check in with you guys tomorrow morning. Good night.